The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. And again Jesus spoke to them in parables saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a marriage feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast. But they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner. My oxen and my fat and calves are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the thoroughfares and invite to the marriage feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guest, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, How did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him out into the outer darkness. The men will weep and gnash their teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, many years ago I remember that I was preparing for an interview and I needed this job. And so a week before I had read all the documents possible and was all prepared for it. The day before the interview, I had a clean shave, I got my hair trimmed and on that day of the interview, I wore the best shirt I had. I was well prepared for the day. Because I knew if I'm not prepared, I would lose my job. I would fail in in my interview. And so I needed to give my best at this interview. There are also certain times when we prepare ourselves very well. When we are invited for a wedding, we prepare ourselves so well. Uh, You might say, Father, don't talk about weddings because in this pandemic, we have not been for a wedding and we are missing those moments. When was the last time you went for a wedding? Yes, it's been a long time. But I'm sure the preparations that we go through when we go to a wedding is immense. It could be your own wedding or someone at your family. But there is a lot of preparations that is needed. In the gospel passage which I read for you today, Jesus is talking about a wedding banquet. The scene is of a wedding setup. And in this parable, there are two parts. The invitation which is given to all and the need to be prepared for this wedding banquet. So in the first part, Jesus tells us that there is this certain king who sent his servants to his kingdom to invite the honored guests. By the king, Jesus meant the king is God the father. And the wedding is of his son who is wedded to the church. In the book of Revelations chapter 19, it describes the church as the bride of Jesus the lamb. Yes, for this wedding feast, the king sent his servants to his kingdom so that he invites the honored guest. But in turn, the honored guest reject this invitation. They say to him that we have work. We have our own business to look after. We are busy. This was to show Jesus was hinting at the Israelites the chosen people of God, the Pharisees and the scribes who reject Jesus, who reject that he is the son of God. 
the king is angry. The king is furious, but he sends his servants the second time. But again, they reject them. They mistreat them and even kill them. The king now upset and furious does not cancel the wedding because Jesus wants to show us that the father is merciful. And so the king again sends out his servants to call people on the streets, on the roads and on the byways, the poor, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, anyone whom they find on the street, tell them that the king is invited you to his son's wedding. This is to show that God loves all and that he wants all of us to be saved. He invites you and me for this wedding feast. No matter if you are a saint or you are a sinner, if you are poor or if you are rich, or if you are happy or sad, Jesus invites you today. God the Father invites you to the wedding feast of the Lamb. The question is, are you willing to accept this invitation? This invitation does not depend on the amount of prayers that we say or the fasting that we do or the actions or the works that we do, but it is a free gift of God. God gives us this invitation free. It is His grace. We need to accept this invitation. The second part of this parable talks about the need to be prepared to go to this wedding banquet. And let me tell you something that there are weddings these days based on a theme where people wear a certain kind of clothes, the floors and the, the frills are all of the same color, there are lightings of the same color, everything is based on a theme. This wedding that Jesus talks about is based on a theme of the same wedding garment. The parable says that the king came to the wedding banquet and saw a man without the wedding garment. And so the king asked the man, where is your wedding garment? And he was speechless. So the king asked his servants to bind him and throw him out. One would ask, why did the king do this? What does he mean by the wedding garment? In this parable, what is Jesus talking about? We need to know the context when Jesus lived. What was the wedding customs? At that time, when the king invited his guests, the servants gave them a royal garment, a robe, to be wore at the wedding banquet. It was freely given. And so, the only thing that one needed to do was to change from his normal clothes to this wedding garment. So even a poor person was able to attend this wedding banquet. But this man, whom the king saw, did not wear this garment. And so, he was thrown out. Obviously, this garment had certain importance. St. Paul tells us what this garment actually means. In the letter to the Colossians, chapter 3 to 14, he says that Christians need to wear this. Put on then, wear it as God's chosen one, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. This is the garment that Jesus is asking us to wear. Do you wear the garment of a heart of compassion? Do you have a compassionate heart? Jesus, our Savior, was a compassionate person. He wants us all to be compassionate towards the needy. In this pandemic, 
There are many who have lost their jobs. There are many who are struggling to find a day's meal. There are so many who are looking out for help. A certain migrant family found that the dad was detected positive with COVID-19 and he was rushed to the hospital. But his wife and his children were all alone. She said that in the locality, no one spoke to us. No one bothered to ask us for two days, do we need any help? Can we help you all out? We were helpless. There are hundreds of people who are helpless. Jesus calls us to be compassionate and to help them. Are you wearing the garment of compassion? Jesus calls us to be kind and humble. My dear couples, are you wearing this garment of kindness and humility? Are you kind to one another? Wives, are you kind with your husband when he does a mistake? Or he forgets to do the things which you told him? Or he forgets to buy something from the market? Husbands, are you humble enough to say sorry to your wives for the things you forgot, for the mistakes that you did? In this pandemic, there is a certain understanding that the wife in the house has to do the office work as well as the school work and then do all the household chores and the husband is working from home and is tired and doing nothing. My dear husbands, could you be humble enough to help your wife at home? Could you help her in the kitchen to arrange the things in your own houses? This would mean that you are wearing the garment of humility and kindness. To be patient and forgiving. Are we forgiving and patient enough with our children? Yes. They are our children and that's the point. They are children and we are adults. Let us not become like children. Let us not quarrel with them. Let us not get upset with them. But let us understand them. Yes, we need to correct them, but correct them with love. First, let us listen to them. Let us have a dialogue of love and of understanding and not a dialogue of anger. My dear people, Jesus calls us to wear this garment of patience and forgiving and forgiveness. If someone has hurt you in this week, your near and dear ones, forgive them. Bring this incident, bring this person to the Lord and pray that you may have the grace to forgive this. For this is the garment that we need to wear. And above all else, wear the garment of love. Wear the garment of holiness. We all want to be holy. Yes, the Holy Spirit helps us to be holy, to be like Jesus, for Jesus was holy. But you may ask, how do I live a holy life? Because the scripture tells us that God alone is holy. Jesus is holy. And if you want to become like Jesus, we need to be holy like Jesus. Jesus was a loving person. How do I become a loving person? The key to become a loving person is to be selfless, is to be understanding, is to be helping others, is always going out of oneself for the other. Jesus always did this. He lived for the other. He lived for God. This is what the saints did. Mother Teresa is a saint. We call her holy because she lived a selfless life. She helped others. She helped the poor. She served God. And this is what you and I are called for. To wear the garment of love. To be a loving person. Yes, and if we wear this garment, we are prepared to go to the wedding banquet. We all want to go to heaven. If I ask you, do you wish to go to heaven? You all would say, yes, Father, we want to go to heaven. 
There is this story that I am uh, reminded of where a priest while preaching his homily in the church asked the congregation, my dear brothers and sisters, do you want to go to heaven? And all said yes. He then said to them, if you want to go to heaven, clap your hands. And the whole congregation began to clap. And he said, very good. If you want to go to heaven, then stand up and clap your hands. They all stood up and they began clapping their hands louder. Then he asked them, if you want to go to heaven, wave your hands in the air. And they all did so. And he said, very good. And if you now still want to go to heaven, then gently sit down. And everybody in the church sat down, except one youth at the back who was still standing. So the priest on the mic asked that boy, you don't want to go to heaven. Why aren't you sitting down? And the boy just smiled at him. And the priest again said, if you do not sit down, you will not go to heaven. You might go to hell. And the boy looked at the priest, smiled and said, Father, I don't want that you go to heaven all alone. I want to give you company. If I sit down, you'll be the only person standing alone in the church. The whole congregation burst out in laughter. Yes, my dear friends, Jesus wants all of us to go to heaven. But the road to heaven is mentioned by Jesus today that we need to put on this wedding garment of love, of patience and kindness, of humility, of forgiveness, of holiness. Jesus invites all of us. The invitation is open to you and me. We need to accept it and we need to be prepared. We need to wear the wedding garment of love. So let us pray today that I may be able to see a yes when he invites me and to wear the wedding garment of love, of patience, of kindness, of humility. Amen. I am Saint Lawrence. If you want to grow spiritually and know more about Jesus and his teachings, please subscribe to the channel. I am saying Bonaventure and if you enjoyed and learned something new then please press the like button. I am saying Philomena and I want you to please share this video with your family, friends and all your WhatsApp groups. I am Saint Thomas of Villanova and I want you all to comment a word or a scripture touch you the most watching this video. Hi friends. I am Saint Monica and today I want to encourage you all to press the bell icon mentioned here below in order to get notified about every new spiritual content on this channel. Stay safe, stay blessed, stay connected.